What's the loneliest thing you've ever done or seen someone do? Worked at a flower shop a few years ago. Couple of old men broke my heart. First guy, Valentine's Day. He was looking at some of our flowers with a troubled look on his face and tears in his eyes. I approached and asked if there was anything I could help him find. He said my wife died 5 years ago, but I always bought her flowers for Valentine's Day. I'm trying to find flowers to put on her grave, but now I can't remember what color she liked. He put his hand over his mouth and his voice cracked when he said the last part. He was tore up over not remembering. Second guy, I was taking an order for him over the phone. He wanted to send flowers to his wife's nursing home, and didn't have any family to take him to visit her. At the end of the call he said hey, do you live close? Do you like cats? I have cats that are so so friendly and you would love them. I have some puzzles we can do too while we chat. You should come visit me sometime. Suob. The first story just slays me. In many ways in a marriage lifelong love affair the two of you become the historians of what that love was. All the little quirks and memories. When one person dies the other is the, the sole historian. And when they forget something, that memory is gone. I am generally a loner and it hit me when I was bored at home and my two friends were on their double dates with their girlfriends. I drove my car at night since I couldn't sleep, went got a burger, and parked in an empty parking lot playing music and eating. Felt alone. Funny thing is I do this regularly but it never registered. I'm used to it doing loner things. Eat alone. Drink. Movies. Etc. Crap dude. I do that all the time and I hate every moment of it. If I could, I'd go buy burgers and listen to music with you. I hope things end up okay, man. You see it a lot at bars. A lonely older man eating by himself at the bar. There was this bar in a college town and an elderly man would come in and have a beer and just sit there and stare at it then look around hoping someone would talk with him. I remember saying hi once and got a terrifying look at what getting old is like. I was walking by my neighbor's house years ago. I see her, 70 plus years old, sitting at the kitchen table talking with someone. I thought maybe her son came to visit, as her husband died a month before. As I continue walking, I see the seat opposite here. It's empty. She's there still talking to her husband. It broke my heart. I delivered to an old guy who ordered pizza once, and he invited me in and offered me said pizza. For context he was no creeper, just an obviously lonely old guy who probably never got any company at his old apartment. It was a slow night so I actually stayed around and just talked to him for a long time. But I didn't take any pizza. The guy told me all about his life, the war, his family across the country. He told me all about his grandson who he said I reminded him of, and he asked me how I liked my job because he said his grandson needed a summer job. He was super excited that his family was coming to see him. The idea that the guy would order a pizza, pay for that, and then invite in the stranger who brought it to eat it makes it stick out as the loneliest thing I've seen. But it wasn't as awful experience by any means. The guy had a really neat life story and it was a welcome break from my job. When I finally left he thanked me profusely for listening and it made a huge difference in my attitude actually doing something meaningful to someone and not just bringing crappy food to misers for an easy buck. I had no friends in 4th grade. My family had moved from a different country back to the USA a couple years prior, and then homeschooled me for a year, and done a terrible job of it. So I basically when I entered public school I had not readjusted to American culture at all. On top of already being an insanely shy and awkward little girl. For the whole school year I played by myself at recess and was weirdly quiet. My only friend was my little beanie baby toy, Snip, the Siamese cat. So by the end of the year when yearbooks came out, I had no one to sign mine. I remember watching everyone walking around signing each other's, and me just sitting there as they passed by. Of course I wanted signatures too, so I did the only thing I knew and wrote have a great summer, snip. Another little girl must have felt bad for me and did eventually ask to sign my yearbook, saw the signature and asked about it. I must have been the shade of a lobster while explaining it. Oh. Thank you for the gold. In high school, I signed my own yearbook, with my classmates names and different colors of pens, hoping that my family would think I had friends. My dad laughed at me. After my parents split up I lived with my dad full time. 
At first he'd make me go over to my mom's when he had to work, but some things happened there, and after that he let me stay home by myself starting around age 10. He got me a German Shepherd puppy, Dallas, who quickly became my best friend, though I was very deprived of human interaction. None of my friends from school ever came over, and I never went to visit them, and my very best, human, friend lived with her mom in a different city so I only got to see her every other weekend if I was lucky. I did a lot of stuff that I would consider extraordinarily lonely, and still do from time to time as it's just habit now. One thing that stands out, is I really missed eating with my family. I got to the point where when I would make a TV dinner for myself for supper, I would always scoop cut off a piece of each food item and put it on a separate plate. I would then sit on the floor with my own meal, and give the other plate to my dog, and we would have supper together. I lost Dallas pretty tragically a couple of years later. She wasn't even two yet, and fell into a really bad depression. That is when it really hit me how alone I was. ETA. Oh wow. I did not expect this to blow up the way it did. Thank you to whomever gave me gold. That was really sweet. You did not have to do that. 3. And for those asking. And thank you for doing so. Yes. I am doing better now. I was really depressed for a few years. To the point I would have suicidal thoughts. But I was lucky enough to find that one thing to keep me going. There were a lot of bad things happening at that time that I won't go into details about. Dallas death was only the final straw. I still have bad days every now and then. Not suicidal bad thankfully, but for the most part I am past that point in my life. I have managed to turn myself around and realize that I would not be the person that I am today had these things not happened. And I'd like to think I turned out alright. I am a firm believer that everything happens for a reason, and I am happy to chat with anyone who is going through a hard time in their lives as well. Anyone is free to send me a message, contrary to my username. I do not bite. I do still miss Dallas. No matter what they say, it is never easy to lose your best friend. Her picture is sitting on my desk above me now, 11 years after she passed, and I still look up at it and get teary eyed from time to time. I have a new dog now. Also a GSD, and a cat, and while I love them more than anything, they aren't Dallas. Dallas sounds like a very lucky dog nonetheless you made her time on earth happy and bright. I'm so sorry for your loss. I hope things are better now. Made friends with my senior housemate and her friends my freshman year of college. Then had my entire circle of close friends graduate. I was stuck more or less friendless my sophomore year, and was sad and lonely and bored. Ended up posting on the college Facebook page asking if anyone wanted to eat lunch with me. I cringe thinking about it. I've been in college for 5 years and I have absolutely no friends. Every semester I'm completely alone all day. I talk to no one. I eat lunch alone. I walk to class alone. For the first 2 years it was pretty depressing but after that I convinced myself that college is for education and not socializing. I'm not going to my graduation ceremony because I will not know a single person in my graduating class and I will not have any friends to take pictures with. My friend worked at a McDonald's. He told me a story about a guy who came in every day and always ordered the same thing. Two double quarter pounders for me, and two to go for my wife. He would get his food then sit by himself and eat his sandwiches. Then he would get up say goodbye and leave. They could see him as he left went to his car, sat in the driver's seat and ate the other two. I always feel a bit sad when I think about this story. Similar story when I worked at Wendy's. A guy and his little old mother would come in every day and order the same thing. One day he comes in by himself and orders the same thing but she's not with him. He just sat there and didn't eat at all. He did this every day for weeks. Eventually I quit because it was a summer job but he was there on my last day. I had a friend who used to play Wii games by herself because her roommates didn't like her and she had no one to play with. Player 1 was her right hand and player 2 was her left. I donate blood to get free movie tickets. By myself. I use said movie tickets to go watch movies. By myself. I take very long, lonely walks drives bike rides at midnight. In high school, I hid in the bathroom to eat lunch, or during PE. If bathrooms were closed, I would hide out behind the school and eat next to the dumpster. If anyone saw me there, god forbid, I quickly dump my food in the dumpster so they don't know my secret. 
It's strangely comforting to know that I wasn't the only one spending my lunches in bathrooms. My mother is currently in the hospice with a terrible combination of terminal cancer, COPD, and mid-grade dementia. Every time I've gone to see her she has been sitting outside of the front doors in her walker. I always ask her how long she has been outside and she tells me that she has been there for less than 5 minutes or so. The last time I went to see her she was sitting outside again and I decided for some reason to see how long she would stay outside as I had heard that she was becoming very disassociated from everyone and everything at her hospice. I sat on some steps about a half a block away and watched her sit there for over 45 minutes not making a single move. She was just staring forward as if she were paralyzed. I sat there and cried, devastated that this is how my mother's life is going to end. When I finally approached her I asked her how long she had been outside for. She said about 5 minutes. I broke down again, hugged her, and took her back inside. She barely remembers me and all she wants to talk about in her lucid moments is how much she misses my stepdad who died 15 years ago. It just absolutely breaks my heart that she lived with that for 15 years and that it's all she can think about when she is aware. I'm not sure if this will be buried or not and I'm sure you've all heard it before, but please, please do not take the people in your life for granted. All it takes sometimes is for you just to be there, just to let someone know that they aren't alone. One of the most depressing moments in my life was when my grandmother, who was in the hospital room as I was born, asked who I was. By the time I was old enough to really appreciate my grandmother and really wanted to get to know her she was gone. She was alive, but she wasn't there. Frick Alzheimer's. I knew an old lady on my street who would regularly call the police for non-existent disturbances after her husband passed away just so she could have somebody to talk to for a little while. After the officers realized what was happening, a lot of them began to stop by her house after their shifts to have tea and chat with her so that she would stop dialing 911. Glad this story had a happy ending. I went to the bar me and my deceased significant other went on our first date and got lit. I completely lost it and started to order drinks for her like she was across for me. A teacher from my school, unmarried, no kids, would regularly go to Disneyland by himself. In theory, it sounds fun but it makes me sad imagining a middle aged guy waiting in line for churros and riding rides alone sad. He's probably very happy while doing it, and it's very common. He might actually not be alone. There are, I forget their name, but people whose lives are Disney and hey have special ways of identifying each other at the parks. Source, my friend is one of them. Once I spent New Year's Eve alone watching a second division soccer match of a crappy league. It wasn't live and I already knew the final score eating frozen lasagna. I don't think I've spent any New Year with my friends. Only with my family relatives. To me that's kind of sad. Growing up, my family was never big on celebrating me or my brother's birthday. One year they had obviously forgotten until well into the day of... For some reason we had one of those candles that played happy birthday never used, so I took it to my room and played it and cried myself to sleep. Throw away because reasons. I spent my birthday by myself. I cancelled all the plans I had made weeks before and drove around 4 hours alone driven by nothing more than my depression and thoughts of self harm. Things have gotten better. Yesterday I had random people in my classes tell me they missed me on Friday. My depression hit me hard on Friday, and one of my professors of mine even offered to drive me to my car as it was raining and I had parked a good deal away. It made me realize what a difference I make in people's lives even if it's just a small one. I can't explain to you how I felt today when one of my classmates said hey PM er sadness is your graded homework someone actually knew my name and acknowledged my existence. It was a surreal feeling. I did the same thing for my birthday this year. Instead of doing anything, I just ordered myself a pizza and watched Netflix. I told myself that's what I wanted to do, but really it was the depression. Probably one of the loneliest days I've had in a while. I once bought myself a bottle of wine, sleeping pills, and a microwavable dinner. I made up my couch like a bed, put on the news and celebrated my Friday night with a real meal. After, I popped 4 pills and downed my bottle just so I could fall asleep without crying from utter loneliness. Sadly, I have done this exact same thing. I have gotten pretty good at hiding my emotions from myself. 
and others. I went through a rough breakup a while back. We had been together for 3 years. She had a son from a previous relationship that I unofficially adopted. His dad was in the picture, but I lived with him and saw him a lot more. He called me dad and he was my best friend. We did everything together. I was his buddy, his father, his disciplinarian. He was my son. When his mom and I broke up just before we moved out of the apartment I took him for one last walk on the trail. We walked hand in hand, and he would take off running occasionally like he always did. Looking back at me with a big smile on his face like he always did. As usual I told him if he was going to run he should watch where he was going. I broke out in tears a few times but he didn't catch me. Thank god. When we got to the little bridge over the creek we stopped and sat like we usually did. We skipped rocks and it hit me all at once. This little guy had taught me how to be a father. We had been by one another's side for 3 years. Ever since he was 5 months old. I lost it. My son told me to stop crying. It was okay. And kept handing me rocks to throw into the water. On the way back to the car his little legs gave out and he was too pooped to walk. It also started to rain. So I scooped him up and ran through the storm, all the way back to our car, and then I said goodbye to him for the last time. That wasn't the final time I saw him. His mom and I had a little girl of our own and I absolutely cherish my daughter. She's my little princess and I love her with all my heart. But her older half brother taught me how to be a dad more than my own dad ever could. For months afterwards I would sit in my basement, utterly alone. I used to have a partner and two kids to come home to, now I only had myself. I'd cry for hours. If I was driving and it started to rain I would whisper to myself, Do you remember when daddy carried you? Do you remember when it rained and daddy picked you up and we ran? I have Asperger's syndrome. At the age of 26 I hugged a rock when on a college geology field trip. It had huge quartz crystals in it. People in my geology class thought it was so funny but I hid my sadness inside. I realized I had willingly hugged something for the first time, but it wasn't a person. If I was in your situation I would have gone for the quartz. No regrets. Very late to the post but I have one story of an experience which has stuck with me for years. About 4 or 5 years ago, I was doing some charity work which basically entailed knocking on people's doors, raising awareness of the charity, and asking if they might be interested in making a donation. I don't recall now if it was the Red Cross or some children's charity but anyway, I digress. I came to an old rundown terraced house towards the end of my circuit and decided I'd knock on the door. Now, it was raining heavily and bitterly cold outside so ice was forming on the pavements and road. I waited for what felt like an eternity before the door finally opened. What I saw surprised me. A multiple amputee was crawling on the floor, apologizing profusely for taking so long to answer the door. I told him a little about the charity and he invited me in so he could fetch his wallet to make a donation. At the time we weren't allowed to accept cash donations but the old fella insisted and handed me a £10 note. I tried to give him the money back but he told me to hang on to the cash to pass on to my manager etc. The guy's house was a real mess, and the only company he seemed to have were a couple of cats which were all too happy to climb up my suit and perch on my shoulders. I sat and spoke with the old man for a while and he explained that he had been in a terrible accident which had led to both of his legs being amputated, and resulted in the limited use of one of his arms. I couldn't help but feel he needed the charity more than the folks I was working for and I asked him if I could do anything for him before I left. He asked me to go to the shop for him and buy a few groceries. Now I kindly obliged. When I returned to his house after trudging through the horrid weather, he asked me to stay and have a drink with him. I soon learned that nobody had been to visit him in a long time and he was absolutely ecstatic to have another soul to speak to. I must admit when I finally said goodbye and left him alone in his rundown old house, I felt utterly saddened by his circumstances but absolutely awestruck that someone in such a position was so willing to give what little money they had freely to help others. Sorry for the long story. Whenever I pick up a to-go order for myself I always ask for extra silverware so they don't think I'm eating all this food by myself. Which I am. Not sure if it will help or not, but I promise you, they couldn't care less and don't even think about it. No one will ever care how many people you're eating with. No one thinks about anyone else that much, especially not a stranger. Plus, there's no reason you couldn't just be using the silverware at your home anyway. 
I had the opportunity to go on a class trip to Europe my sophomore year of high school. I didn't have any friends that went on the trip, so I tried to cling to people I at least sort of knew. I remember one night I had wondered where the two guys I was sharing the hotel room were, and eventually I figured out they had gone to the room next to us where a couple girls were staying. So I knocked on the door and was greeted by one of the guys by saying 6 is a crowd, box pop challenge, and he promptly closed the door. Freaking Christ. I went back to my hotel room and started sobbing uncontrollably, realizing that I was on the other side of the world, as far away from everyone as I had ever been while also reeling from being rejected. I tried really really hard to imagine as many friends family members as I could there in the room with me. I talked to them and they reassured me that I was a decent guy, and it was going to be alright. This might sound like a first world problem. I understand I was in Europe specifically Rome at the time, and what a grand opportunity that was. But I've definitely never felt more alone than in that instance. When I was in the hospital a few months ago my friends were usually busy and couldn't visit me very often. So I would call the nurses in my room just to talk. I'm a nurse and this is very common. When the night is slow, I love sitting and hearing your life story. That's probably my favorite part of this profession. On nights that are insane. Please understand I still respect this but I'm just busy. I was an immigrant and had to go back to grade 12. So I did not have any friends. It was our graduation luncheon and I don't know who to sit with so I sat with random people at first. But then they asked me nicely to leave as their friend is sitting there. Then I went to another table but got rejected as well. I ended up sitting with the special class which I did not mind as they were awesome. That was really sad though. Oh and nobody remembers me from high school. I don't know if that is a plus or not. I sit alone at lunch, staring down at my food, eating in silence. I catch myself having conversations with fictional people, out loud. I play online games against myself. I have at least one nightmare every week where I am an old man who was never married, a kissless virgin, and has absolutely no one. I moved away from everyone I knew about 1.5 years ago to take a new job across the country. It's been 1.5 years, and despite my efforts, I haven't been able to make any good friends, just acquaintances. Back home I have a lot of friends, but I only get back home about once a year, and most of those friends are busy with families. About a year ago I started to have a little celebrity crush on an actor who is on a show that I had started watching. It soon snowballed into what is now some sort of obsession fantasy state. I daydream about him constantly. At night when I go to bed, I pretend he's next to me. I've lived a thousand lifetimes with him in my head. I actually had to stop watching the show he's on earlier this year, as they introduced a new female character and it kind of seems like she might become a love interest. I was having these intense feelings of jealousy. This is so freaking ridiculous to type out, but honestly, this is my life. I'm in love with and in an imaginary relationship with a TV actor, as ridiculous and unhealthy as it sounds. It's probably the one thing that has consistently given me a reason to wake up every morning. My long distance boyfriend is the only thing keeping the depression and loneliness I've felt since I moved from taking over my life. Every time I think about giving up, or get really depressed suicidal, I imagine all the new daydreams I can have about this man. And I keep going. It's lonely and pitiful as frick, but hey, if it works it works. My friend is a teacher and one of the quiet kids came in and handed out like 30 party invitations to his birthday. Every kid in the class told him they didn't want to go. Every single one. This lonely kid wasn't mean or weird of anything. Apparently, they are really hot on this kind of isolation in the school. So they grabbed the kid and got him to do something important outside the classroom. Then another teacher came in and told the other kids how their behavior was a freaking disgrace and made them all understand their actions think a bunch of them made friends with him after that. Sometimes kids, and adults, need stuff spelling out for them. This story broke my heart when I heard it. I can't imagine how upset you would be as a parent if your kid came home saying that everyone said no. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
bye for now.